So in this video, what I want to cover off is a couple of different ways that you can offboard devices from Windows Defender for business. Now, the starting point for this is going to be security.microsoft.com. And in there, we have a look under endpoints and we see there is a device inventory and that will show us all the devices and their current status. So if we go across here and have a look at their onboarding status, you'll see that they all are onboarded. Now the device in question that I'm going to offboard is this device here. So it's actually the device that I'm on here. So desktop dash KQ7. So if I go and have a look at this, you'll see that uh, this is indeed this uh, same device here. All right, so this is the device that I'm going to uh, offboard. Now the starting point or the first option when it comes to offboarding is simply to use a, a local script, which you can then download and run on that device. Now to find that local script, you scroll down to the bottom here and go into settings. And then in settings, select endpoints. And then when endpoint comes up, scroll down the bottom of the options, you'll see that there is a, an offboarding option under device management. So we can select the operating system here, in this case, Windows 10. And then what we can do is we can select from a number of different options for uh, the offboarding process. In this case, we're going to choose the local script uh, for our Windows 10 devices, and then we would click to uh, download that package. Now that package will download to our local machine and it will be a zip file. And when we expand the zip file, you'll see that you get a CMD file here. Now that CMD file is only valid uh, basically for 30 days because there needs to be uh, security around that. So if you are going to offboard devices over time, make sure that you do get the latest script um, to offboard those devices. So to run this script, what we need to do is we need to go out and run our command prompt. We'll need to do that as uh, an administrator on the device. All right, so let's go in there and let's go back to the users directory. Let's go to where we downloaded that and let's go into the downloads area and we should see that file there. All right, so what we need to do to offboard using the local script is simply to uh, run that script and that will step through the uh, processes of uh, offboarding. You can open that script and uh, have a look at it if you want. It'll take a minute or two to uh, complete that process. Now, the important thing to remember with offboarding from Defender for Endpoint is going to be that devices are not going to disappear uh, immediately from the console. They are going to take uh, basically a while to uh, disappear from the console. So they're held in an inactive mode for about seven days. And then after that, their data will be retained uh, potentially up for up to 180 days afterwards. So there is a Microsoft uh, article here that I can show you that will give you all the details uh, about that. So while we're waiting for that to offboard, let's go in and just have a look at this Microsoft uh, article here. So again, do a, uh, a search in your environment for this document here. All right and it will show you uh, the dates and the actual processes that I'm gonna run through here, all right? So look for a document off-board devices from Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Services. And if we go down here, you'll see the status of the device will be switched to inactive seven days after um, off-boarding and the device's profile with that data uh, will remain in the devices list for no longer than 180 days. So it's not gonna disappear uh, from that location immediately. So do uh, keep that in mind. So you'll see that our offboarding now has uh, completed, so we can uh, press any key to uh, complete the process. Now, the way that we can really tell that it has been uh, successfully offboarded off is if we go into our registry, so we run uh, regedit here, Again, we'll need admin privileges to achieve that. And when we go in, you'll see that there is a registry key here. So a local machine, uh, software, Microsoft, Windows, advanced threat protection, and then status. And you'll notice here that there is a key onboarding state, and that's currently set to zero, which means that uh, as far as the workstation is concerned, it has been uh, offboarded. It will report that uh, into the console. So that's really the only way that we can see for sure that the device uh, has been uh, fully offboarded uh, from the Defender for Endpoint environment. Now, the other way that we can uh, do this is using a policy like uh, from Intune. So again, we need to grab some details around that policy. So again, go to the 
offboarding location here again select Windows 10 but instead of a local script here pull this down and select the bottom option here mobile device management and Microsoft Intune so what that's going to do is and we select the option again it's going to uh, download a package which will again uh, only be valid uh, for a month so let's download that again and that will download into our location here. So we're finished with uh, the script there, the CMD. This is the zip file that we're going to use uh, with our uh, policy. So what we're going to do is we extract all of that. We'll put it in the same directory so we can go in and have a look and see exactly what is in that script. Now, it's not actually uh, a script per se. So let me, uh, again, open this. Uh, what we need to do is let's open this just with our notepad. So uncheck that and select notepad. So this is going to basically give us a string that we need to put into our policy when it comes to uh, doing the offboarding here. So we need to uh, keep tabs of this. So you will need to download that file, open it up in notepad, and then we'll need to use this in our policy. Now to create a policy, we need to go to endpoint.microsoft.com. What we're gonna to need to do is go into uh, devices here. We're going to need to go into our Windows devices. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, basically select a configuration profile. So what we want to do is create a new configuration profile. So let's go in here and create uh, a new profile. Now we're going to select the type here as being a Windows 10 uh, profile, Windows 10 and later. And then what we want to do here is we want to select an option from our templates and we're going to create a custom policy here. So let's go in and create a custom policy and we're going to call this Defender Offboarding, give it a valid name here, go next. And now what we need to do is we need to add a OMA URI setting, so let's add that. And again, the Microsoft documentation will give us uh, the requirements here. So let's give this uh, a name. Let's call this uh, offboarding. And the description again, put in here for Defender. And the OMA URI is going to uh, basically look like this once I paste it in. All right, so you'll see here that it is a string that uh, again ends with the slash offboarding. So make sure that you do uh, have that. Um, so what I'll do here is I will uh, probably, I'll come back and show you that elsewhere. So let me actually show you that maybe in uh, WordPad. So this is what uh, that URI looks like. Give WordPad a sec. So that's what the URI uh, basically is going to uh, look like. All right, so you'll see it's a dot slash, make sure you get the dot slash at the beginning, dot slash device vendor, MSFT, uh, Windows Advanced Threat Protection slash, slash offboarding. So do make sure that you get uh, that information correct. And then the data type here we need to make as a string. And then where we get the value for that string was in the file that we downloaded uh, from security.microsoft.com. So we take a copy uh, of that offboarding from in that offboarding file, and we simply paste it into that location. We then uh, save that. All right, so that is the policy. And then we go next. Next, we're gonna to have to determine which machines we want to uh, apply this to. Now, the important thing here is to remember is I don't want to apply it to all my devices typically because that's going to offboard all of the devices. I'm typically only going to want to do this to a specific group of machines. So the best idea is to create a special devices group for offboarding or again, be able to identify that device uh, uniquely so that you can do that. So if we go through here, you'll see that I should have created a group here called to be retired. All right, so that's going to select the machines that I do want to be retired. So if you do apply this policy to every user, every device, remember they will all be offboarded uh, from Defender, which is probably not what you want. So you make, want to make sure that you're only targeting this to the specific devices uh, that you do want offboarded. We go next, we go next, and then we're going to go in and create that policy. Now, once that policy is created, it's then going to go and apply that to our devices, and that will take 
obviously an amount of time for those devices to pick up that policy. We can go into the uh, device status here and we can monitor that and see when that has been applied to the device to again uh, ensure that it has been off-boarded. And as always, like I said, the easiest way to tell on the actual device is to go into that uh, registry settings. So we go back into the registry here and have a look at that key again, just to remind you. So again, we want to have a look at uh, H key local machine software microsoft windows advanced threat protection status and make sure the onboarding state is set to zero so that's going to ensure that that device is configured to uh, offboard now another way that we can offboard machines is to use an api provided by microsoft so if we look at uh, the API call that's going to need to be made. So we're going to have to go to api.securitycenter.microsoft.com and then basically slash API slash machines and then the uh, device ID that is in our Defender console and then also uh, slash offboard. Now we need to make sure that the body of the request here includes this comment here, so offboard machine by automation. And like I said, you can set this up to uh, be used by PowerShell. Um, I've made that script available in uh, my GitHub repository, so you can go and grab that. You'll need to set up an Azure AD app to do the permissions to do that, but I have written a blog post that uh, will take you through uh, all of that uh, process. So if you go and have a look at my GitHub repo, so github.com forward slash director CIA slash office 365, go in there and look for the script called mde-api offboard.ps1. Uh, you'll be able to download and uh, use that as an example uh, to be able to offboard via the API. The only thing that you will need to do is make sure that you have set up your Azure AD app and you have also uh, edited this script from the repo to include your application ID, secret and tenant ID from your Azure app so that you can then run that PowerShell script successfully. So once you've set up everything to allow the script to run, basically what you need to do is you just need to go and run that, which I'll do here. Uh, what it's going to do for you firstly is it's going to show you a list of all the devices that are onboarded currently and allow you to choose one or more of those. So if you want to hold the control key down, you can select multiples, or again, if you hold the shift, you can select between them as you can with Windows Explorer. But in this case, I'm just going to select the desktop KQ7 and go OK, which is the one that I selected before. And you'll see in this case, again, the API has run and it's going to make a request to the back end to go and offboard that device. So there's nothing that I need to do on the workstation when I use the API, it's contacting the back end to do that, which makes it a bit more convenient uh, to be able to uh, offboard devices without having to go and touch every single device. Now, if I do run the API again, uh, what you'll find and select the same machine again, what I'm gonna find is that as I said, none of this takes uh, effect immediately. So again, if I go in and select that same machine, you'll see what will happen here. I'll get a warning that this device is already uh, being offboarded. So it is already in progress to achieve that. So just be aware of that. As mentioned, the offboarding is not immediate. It can take a little time, uh, but you can run this offboarding script that I made available on you know, a regular basis just to check where it is in that process. Now, given that the we have an API to allow us to, to offboard, we can use it with things like PowerShell, but we can also use it with things like uh, Power Automate here. So what I've done is I've basically created a uh, flow here using Power Automate that will uh, go and get the appropriate Azure AD app secrets to allow connection to the tenant. It will then go through a list um, that's maintained in SharePoint of the devices in Defender. So I have another flow that goes and creates those. Uh, it will then poll that and it will look in that list uh, to see whether any of the devices have been marked um, to be off border so that there's basically a field there that I can set to yes, that will indicate I want to want off board device. When that happens, uh, basically what I'm going to do is set up the beginning of the URL and then I'm going to go through each one of those individual devices and their details and basically go in here and apply effectively the same uh, API request here. So I'm going to build that URL out 
using the base URL I started with here plus the device number and then I'm going to offboard uh, that device and you'll see in here here is the comment field that I had uh, in my PowerShell script so again there are lots of different ways to offboard device devices the easiest way is going to be uh, simply to use a local script but you can also do it using a policy using uh, endpoint manager and intune you can also offboard uh, using a powershell script and potentially the power automate capabilities thanks to the api that is available and again remember when you do offboard devices they're not going to disappear uh, from the inventory immediately they will take a little while for them to uh, disappear out of there and that microsoft article will give you more information as to uh, the timing for that so remember the best way to tell on the device if it has been successfully marked as being offboarded is to go into the registry and have a look at the key uh, that I indicated there. So once again, that key is going to be HK Local Machine Software, Microsoft Windows Advanced Threat Protection slash status. Look at the offboarding state setting and make sure that is set to zero. And that indicates the system that the device um, is going to be offboarded. So there's a couple of handy ways to go about offboarding devices from Defender for Business and Defender for Endpoint. And again, I hope you've got something out of this video.